handoff to Jonathan oh. Taylor. Loose hole. He's at the 30. He's going to go. 10, 5, touchdown. Jonathan Taylor made a man miss the line of scrimmage and then runs it into Pater. And a one-handed INT. Are you kidding me? Kenny Moore. What a play by Naheem Hines. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. On this episode, having a good friend of mine, Mr. Jake Arthur himself. Uh, he's senior analyst for Sports Illustrated Colts. Jake, how are you, man? I'm doing awesome, brother. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. I can't believe we are in the single digits for the NFL draft now. It's absolutely crazy to me that we're at this point. I, I mean... I don't know about you. I, I mean, I know you're kind of a draft guy, which obviously is why I'm bringing you on here. Uh, but man, it's just like it's like Christmas to me, man. It, it, it really mm-hmm. is. It's just like for NFL fans and NFL people, it's just like one of the best couple days of the year. How excited are you for this draft? Yeah, it's it really is like the best time of year. It's it's like Christmas and in, in springtime for real, like you just said. There, there's just I, I don't know. It's it's like a certain time where I get to set up my house like a friggin' mad scientist or something for like a three day stretch. <laughs> yes. And uh, there was, of course, the the two or three years that I was in the Colts facility during the draft, which is just incomparable, you know, being in an, in an NFL team's facility during it. Uh, yeah. So that either that even strengthened my love for the draft even more. So yeah. just uh, yeah, it's 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 exciting that it's almost here, but it's going to be sad once we have to wait another 365 days for it. I know, right? Yeah, it's like all this build up, and then it's like, well, there's really nothing to talk about hardly <laughs> all the way up to the season. So, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like Christmas in a way where it's like there's all these like, you know, it's kind of like Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's like there's these two big things, and then you have to wait so many months for really anything of note to come yeah. up. So, yeah, yeah I'm Memorial Day talking. in May, finally, five months later. Yeah, seriously, seriously. But yeah, Jake, uh, I'm excited, man, because we have a good amount of questions that our listeners uh, submitted here. Colts Nation submitted about the NFL draft. Pretty much all of them are about the draft. There's a few Colts-related questions in terms of the team. But overall, this is a draft Q&A with it being single digits till the draft. And so we're going to start here with some of our guys on YouTube from our guy, the Niski Cap, he says, I've seen some stuff saying that Waddle slash Smith could fall to the 20s with other teams being quarterback hungry. If that happens, would you be okay with passing on offensive tackle slash edge to get a big-time playmaker on offense? What do you think, Jake? Um, It can't just be anyone. If it's Waddle, if it's, uh, Waddle or Devontae Smith, then they certainly would be exceptions. Uh, those are guys you would you would categorize as special talents offensively. And you just made this move for Carson Wentz. You want to surround him with as much to make sure that he's successful. You know, uh, yeah. so giving him a guy like that, they, they they need at least one more big time receiver. Anyways, you unfortunately can't really invest. You can't really say Paris Campbell is that. You can put Michael Pittman in that category, but you need one more because T.Y. Hilton is obviously older and on a one-year deal. So you need one more guy. Uh, so certainly Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith would be fine. It's going to just obviously depend how their board is stacked. I would imagine those guys would be above probably the Darasaws and Cosmes and and uh, and Tevin Jenkins just because th- those are top 10, top 15 talents. They can find other places to get those those positions that they need. And I think we all know there's going to be a trade back at some point. They'll grab another, an extra second, third, or fourth somewhere along the line. It's kind of like best player available at that point. We've seen Ballard do that before, even as early as last year, when nobody thought it was a need per se, but he traded up and got Jonathan Taylor. I mean, you could see that happening if one of these guys falls here, even if it isn't an offensive tackle slash edge. So I agree with you there, man. All right, uh, moving on to the next one. This one is from Kent Pewterball. He says, what tight ends in this draft intrigue you that are realistic for the Colts? Uh, Realistic. So I think you look at day three or day two for them uh, starting out because Kyle Pitts, is that's not going to happen. Right. (laughs) Uh, There's a few guys specifically on day two I look at. Uh, You've got Pat Fryermuth from Penn State, Brevin Jordan from Miami, and then Tommy Tremble from Notre Dame. Those are all guys that 
fit what the Colts would probably want in a tight end. Uh, there's also been a lot of smoke around the Colts and Tommy Trimble. Uh, of course, Frank Reich was seen talking to Notre Dame's tight ends coach for, I guess, like an hour or something at the pro day. Hmm. Uh, but Brevin Jordan is, you know, he's a guy that can create yards after the catch. And then Pat Fryermuth and Tommy Trimble are both like really well-rounded guys. They can block, they can catch, they can make plays after the catch. Uh, and then day three, a couple guys I'm kind of looking at, Hunter Long, Noah Gray, and Miller Forrestall. Uh, those are more guys that can give you a little bit of everything, blocking, uh, you know, receiving threats and, and the whole thing. So this may finally be the draft that uh, Chris Ballard drafts a tight end. We know that Frank Reich certainly would love that. So uh, those those would be my my options for day two and day three, because I don't see it happening on uh, in round one. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. It, it's interesting because I feel like the Colts last year, they kind of put a Band-Aid at tight end a little bit. Not to say Trey Burton wasn't good in spurts, but like they haven't found that number one guy yet. And I think getting a guy like Tremble or getting one of those other guys, I think really could help solidify that and, and stop doing that for, for tight end and give you your tight end for the near future. I think that's really important for this offense and how it, it runs and, and all those things. So I agree with you there. I like all those options. Honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to any of those guys. I just think that that's a secret need. A lot of people don't talk about is the tight end position, finding that number one tight end with that, whoever that looks like wherever that is, but yeah. All right, let's move on now to Jay grubs. He says, could this be the year that Ballard trades up and gets two picks in the first round? And a follow-up, do we address the safety position in the draft or look to already thin free agents available? Um, so I don't think they'll be trading up in the first. They just simply don't have the ammo to do it without that third-round pick. Um, 21, I, I think they would have to trade up probably five, six, seven spots in order to get into a range they'd even like. Uh, how Chris Ballard typically sees at the top 15, 20 picks, those guys are difference makers, immediate starters. And then after that, the the margin for how guys are graded is is so thin that you might as well trade back, to be honest. Uh, and that that's kind of his explanation a lot of time for, for trading back. So I definitely don't see them moving up, uh, at least not in the first. We've seen them do that on like uh, round four or so. If they see someone they really like, they'll hop up and do it. Kari Willis, they did it with Jonathan Taylor in the second last year. Uh, they did Tyquan Lewis at the end of the second round a few years ago. And then, uh, of course, I'm, I'm missing someone else there. But, yeah, I, I don't think they'll be trading up because, again, they just don't really have the juice to do it. Uh, as for safety, there's a lot to say about that position as well in this, in this draft. Uh, from what I've heard, that certainly is a possibility for them. Uh, this is a good group of safeties that can do a little bit of everything. Uh, the Colts obviously wouldn't be looking to replace Julian Blackman or Kari Willis as starters. I think they'd like to give Matt Eberflus that key third tight end guy who they can just use in whatever role in, in sub packages. They've done it with Quincy Wilson. They did it with Clayton Gathers previously. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Mitchell. They just like to have three safeties for, for certain things. Uh, Javon Holland is someone I see. Hamza uh, Nasruddin from Florida State, Jacoby Stevens, uh, that's been a big name. Our, our guy Zach Hicks, of course, that's no, no one, no one uh, smokes up Jacoby Stevens quite like Zach does. <laughs> um, Richie Grant, it's it's a Tyree Gillespie. That's that's a name I, I've heard. Uh, but yeah, that's this is a group to look for this year. Chris Ballard, as much as he likes the interior of a roster and to build from the inside out. He likes to draft defensive backs as well. So I could definitely see that happening. Where would you say, like, you would see the Colts maybe trying to go safety? What round would you think, or around what round? Um, I w honestly wouldn't be shocked to see it happen on day two. Um, mm -hmm. It's, of course, it's it's nothing that any of us would say is a need, but they go best player available. And if they see a guy that they think can take their defense to another level, or at least their secondary, they'll do it. Uh, again, I don't think it'll be first round, but I could see it happening in, in uh, the second or third round if if they see fit. Gotcha. All right. So this is kind of a question two people ask. So I'll just kind of ask it. Ved and Brian ask a similar questions, but Brian's is a little bit more specific. He said, do you believe the Colts should slash would draft a quarterback? 
That's a tough one this year. I've said that I think they still very well could. Um, I don't think they're down at the quarterback position this offseason. It makes the most sense to me to sign a veteran backup behind Wentz uh, in free agency. Just because if Wentz goes down, your two guys are Jacob Eason and Jalen Morton. And no matter how much any of us like Jacob Eason, and I mean, I, I like him and I think he's a good project and that he eventually could be a decent player. But right now, the Colts will not commit to him as the backup. Like, that's just yeah. facts. Um, he is at least going to get more competition in there against him. So if they drafted a quarterback this year, I could see it being someone who, again, they need to mold for a year or two. Someone like Kellen Mond comes to mind. Uh, he seems to fit what both Frank Reich and Chris Ballard might like in a quarterback, especially Chris Ballard. He's a real athletic traitsy guy, um, but he is, he's not someone that would be ready in year one. That's kind of a fallback to me. Like if they find out that Carson Wentz in fact is not their guy, then they have this option behind them and they may be comfortable with someone like Kellen Mond and, uh, and Jacob Eason going into 2022 or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, you've also got shoot. There's uh, I'm trying to think of the other Davis Mills. Uh, that, that's another one that could be pretty interesting to, to look for. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't see it being a popular position for them to take, but I certainly could see it happening. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. Uh, but I think obviously we'd both prefer free agency if you do that, yeah. but, but yeah, I, I, that could be a very surprise pick for a lot of people. And, and that would be kind of crazy. I mean, Colts Twitter would blow up, man, if that yeah. happened. Um, yeah. I, uh, I actually wrote something on, just on Sunday. I, I got emailed some, some odds from a, uh, a bookkeeper that the Colts were like the, the top three, most likely team to sign Alex Smith. And mm. so I wrote something about it and, you know, it makes sense for them to, to go for a, a veteran backup behind Wentz. And yeah. of course that, that blew up, you know, the people who had opinions on Smith and of course people who love Jacob Eason and then the next day Smith retires. So <laughs> uh, good timing never on that. fails, never yeah. fails man. <laughs> Always. All right. Dotson asks Dotson worldwide. He says, how about draft? Okay. So, this is a troll, by the way. He's a Titans okay. fan. He found his way in here. He said, how about drafting a kicker in round one? Colts can wait in 2023 on drafting offense or defense in the first round. Tighten up. All right. We're not really going to address that one. Besides this, I mean, that's all we're going to say. About that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Thrill X Chill videos. He says, what are the odds that we can get Sam Cosme with the current spot being 21? He said, maybe move up and grab Jamar Chase. So two-parter there. So again, on moving up, not, not going to happen. I don't see Jamar Chase really making it past like seven or eight. Um, Cosme, I would imagine will be there past 21. Uh, he's just, if you, if you pay attention to some of the, the major analysts that are really plugged in, he's moving down boards. Hmm. And um, that seems to be a, a real thing from NFL teams eyes. It's one of those things where those of us online who's, who study things like him, more than the NFL seems to. He tested really well athletically, and he's got great tape. Uh, but there's just some some stuff that may or may not be a big deal that could cause him to move down. Um, mm -hmm. Shoot, I, I could see it being feasible that he could be there at 54. It seems like a stretch, uh, but I don't know that they would go from at 21. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Originally, I feel like a lot of people would have said, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, with how much his stock has slid, it seems like, yeah, I agree with you. I think maybe you try to maybe even trade up a little bit if the Colts want to do that. And if he's still there, you know, a little bit before 50 where they pick there, maybe the Colts go that direction. But but yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, I think he's going to probably be a second round guy there. All right, moving on. Braden Hauser, he says, who should they draft? All right, so this is going to be more of a your preference kind of question here, Jake. Who should the Colts draft with their first round pick? Uh, so if we're just looking at realistic options, I've got I've got three names really that are are my main targets. Uh, I love Christian Darrisaw, the the left tackle from Virginia Tech. Uh, I think he's he does really well athletically. He's really tough as a blocker. He's just kind of the the total package. Uh, I honestly have him ranked above Rayshon Slater, just behind uh, Penny Sewell. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be my preference. And then I also love Quiddy Pay and Jalen Phillips. Uh, Quiddy Pay, I think, could 
immediately contribute as a pass rusher. Uh, he's also a very good run defender, so he could play the right or left end spot, whichever they prefer. I really don't know what they're doing at, at defensive end right now and who they want to play right or left because their bigger, more edge setting guys are usually the left side. And then your your smaller, quicker, bendier guys are on the right side. So I really don't know what their plan is there this year right now because they've just kind of got they've just kind of got a hodgepodge of guys at the moment. They don't have that main pass rusher. Um, so a guy like Quiddy Pay could play either side. Jalen Phillips, I really like his tape, but if his medicals scare them, then then that's fine with me. You know, I, I believe them. If they don't like his medicals. He's had the concussions. He he had the the stuff that caused him to briefly retire when he was at UCLA. So I get it. If they don't, if they pass on him, I would imagine that's why. Uh, yeah. Those are those are my main guys that I'd be looking for. Gotcha. I'm right there with you with with two of those guys. I think uh, Jalen Phillips is the only guy I'm like iffy on. It. It's the injuries as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a little bit concerning to me. But obviously, the Colts do all the research they need to. They have all the background information they need to make a very well educated decision. But yeah, I'm personally kind of I've gone back and forth on tackle versus edge. I'm kind of like I feel like you can mask tackle a little bit easier than edge, but. Either way, I don't think it's going to be a bad pick. I just think Edge might be the more pressing need right now with, like you said, no number one true guy right now. you got to address it somehow. Um, Mm. That's kind of where I'm at, at least on Edge. I don't know where you're at in terms of which one you would prefer the Colts to take. If there's like, you know, Quiddy Pay and Christian Darisol there at 21, which guy would you take or which position would you take? Yeah, so like you said, I I think it is easier to mask a deficiency at left tackle than edge because you can you can have a tight end over there to chip help. You can have your passing game go quicker. You can do things in the run game. Um, in the end, if you don't have a pass rush, it will catch up to you, and your defense will not be that great at the end of the day. I would totally understand if they see a 10-year solution at, at left tackle and they take it. I wouldn't be mad about it in the least. Um but it's just so much harder to find an elite pass rusher. So mm-hmm. if if their guy at pass rusher is there, if they have one guy ranked 19 and one guy ranked 20 or whatever, however their board remains when it gets to them, one of them's left tackle, one of them's edge, I would say go edge. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I probably have Christian Darisol ranked slightly above the other guys, but – Man, it's it's hard. How long has it been since they've had a legit like top dog pass rusher? Hmm. It's it was Robert Mathis, and he was well into his thirties. So yeah, they right. haven't had a young top pass rusher in like ten years. So that's so they, wild. It's something they need. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like they haven't had that for so long. You know, for so long they didn't have a running game. Like it's just crazy how you know Ballard has been done such a good job of addressing it, but pass rush has still been an illusion, at least at edge rusher right now. So I agree. I, I would probably go edge as well if I'm given the option between the two and they're fairly the same there. Yeah. All right. Kevin Hester asks, what do you think the chances are that Chris Ballard trades down in the first round? Again, I think there's a good chance given how deep this left tackle class is. He may want that third round pick back and he loves his second round picks as well. Yeah, I think that's very, very realistic. Um, I think it's the likelihood, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, there, there's. I think we've all identified a good chunk of guys that would make a lot of sense at 21 by this point. Mm-hmm. And so with that in mind, it makes sense for them to trade down a little bit because they'll still have at least one of those guys there that they want. And they've used that reasoning before, Chris Ballard has. Uh, when discussing the draft, he says, you know, we have a pocket of players right here. If we think we can move down and still get at least one of those guys, then we'll do that. And so I think that's the highest likelihood. I think we all know it probably is killing him to not have a third round pick. Um, so there, there's just so many guys available. Like if they wanted to get like Jason Owe, for example, I think he fits them really well, at least how they try to draft uh, defensive ends. He's really raw, and I don't know if you want another project at defensive end, but I could see them going for it. He'd be more appropriate in the late 20s than at 21, for example. Hmm. Uh, so I I just think it's – if it was take this guy, this guy, this guy, or trade back, I would put my money on them trading back. Yeah, I think it's pretty realistic. Yeah, I agree with you there. Sean Stewart says, 
Will you be upset if we don't address offensive tackle and edge in rounds one and two? In what scenario do you see that not happening? Uh, no, I wouldn't be upset. I mean, I think we all would want it. Um, but anyone who pays attention to what they do, you just have to be open for whatever they're going to pick because they don't draft based on need. It just so happens this is a pretty good uh, edge class and offensive tackle class. So it makes a lot of sense for them to address those first. But uh, I think Chris Ballard has drafted a cornerback every year. Um that, could, that I think that's a real possibility early on, even the first round. Again, yeah. we talked about a tight end in, in the second round. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. What was the the second part of that? Uh, he was just asking, what scenario do you see that not happening? So I think oh, he not happening. touched on it with, yeah. with the corner or you know another position that we're like, that's not a need, but best player available there. And Ballard's right. like, I'm going to pull the trigger. Yeah, I can see that happening. So. Yeah, it, it, for example, in, in round one, uh, JC Horn to me screams Colts. Um, mm. I could definitely see the Colts going for that. There's just other positions that, that they may look, and, and it's not even that they're looking at the position. It's just the player, you know, Greg Newsom cornerback also. Um, the, yeah. A, a wide receiver makes a lot of sense if they want to do it. A bigger guy, like maybe Rashad Bateman or Amon Ross St. Brown, Tylen Wallace, Nico Collins, um, Th- those guys just make a lot of sense and of course would mean they don't get a tackle or edge early. Yeah. Yep. And I would not be upset at that because obviously they know what they're doing. They, they have some guys at edge that are, I mean, obviously nobody stepped up, but they have some young guys at edge that have some talent. So I could see that, that line of thinking there from Chris Ballard and company. Um, all right. So moving over to Facebook now, Seth says trading picks, back up next year so basically asking kind of a similar question but i guess we'll throw in also the next year do you think the colts could potentially be looking at to acquire more picks next year when there's a little bit more known potentially about some of these prospects um yeah because for some reason teams tend to to devalue future picks so if if the colts could let's say they could get a 2022 second rounder instead of a 2021 third rounder, they might do that. Um, I think it's usually because teams think they're going to be better this coming year so that their draft pick will be lower. Maybe that's it, but I I could see it happening. They of course would probably prefer to have more picks this year, especially without having the third rounder, but they need to look to supplement next year too, because they're going to be without a second rounder, which is likely going to become a first. So Mm-hmm. especially in this scenario where they're probably not going to have that first, second round pick next year. I, I could see that happening. Yep. I think so too. So the next one from Nathan, he says an offensive tackle related question. Do the Colts trade up and, ta- and <laughs> this is interesting. Grab tackle Penny Sewell. I'm just going to say no on that or trade back up into the first in order to get Tevin Jenkins. Yeah. I think Tevin Jenkins is a lot more likely. Um, Sewell's probably going to go top 10. And like we've said, they just don't really have the ammo to go up that far. Um, yeah. I guess there's been some, I, it's probably just nothing, but there's, I, I forget what it was, immaturity or something about Sewell, but a guy that good, a team will overlook it. We, I mean, we, we saw Laramie Tunsil ripping bong hits through a mask, like right before the draft <laughs> and he still went, still went high in the draft. So um no, it's it's a lot more likely that uh, Tevin Jenkins is the pick. Apparently, they like him. Uh, they've talked to him. So, he would fit. He's played left and right tackle. Uh, his style of play next to Quentin Nelson would endear fans immediately. Like, so many fans love Quentin Nelson because of his style of play. Well, you're getting that at left tackle right next to Nelson. So, I just kind of picture Jenkins and Nelson just bulldozing guys on the left side with Jonathan Taylor running on the outside to the left. And that, that that's something that the Colts probably could look to, to do as well. And it's probably something they've already thought of. Yeah. Uh, and I missed the po- second part of his question. Do you think potentially if the Colts traded back, Tevin Jenkins could still be there? Maybe in that second round. Second round, probably not. Uh, I think Jenkins probably doesn't go any later than 25. Honestly, if, if they trade any further back than 21, they greatly risk losing him. Um, the, the Colts are probably one of the final stops where he could be available if I had to guess. Hmm. Okay. That's good to know. All right. This one from Darius. He says, what corner will fix our cornerback room? Interesting question. 
Uh, the first couple I would look at, I, I've mentioned them, but J.C. Horn and Greg Newsom. Um, you know, you've got Patrick Sertan the second, but he's not going to be there. He'll probably be a – he'll go in the top 12, I'm sure. Uh, but, yeah, those two, they're very much Colt-style players. They're bigger corners. Uh, they've got the the short area quickness that is important in zone defense. Um, they're feisty. They like to tackle. That's Those are Matt Eberflus' demands from cornerbacks. Um J.C. Horn especially is is a bit of a, a chatterbox and can get under a receiver's skin. Uh, he's kind of one of those corners that, you know, we would say has a screw loose, you know, like a Jalen Ramsey or something like that. So those are always kind of good guys to have. Um, Horn would be my answer. Uh, Caleb Farley, I don't know how realistic that is. He had that back procedure, and the Colts haven't really gone with any uh, injury concern players early in the draft. And Asante Samuel is real small. You know, he, he's got that kind of Kenny Moore size. I don't know how much the Colts would want to have multiple corners like that. They just know Kenny Moore is a special player. Um, so, yeah, I, w- I would look at that. The second round is really chock full of cornerbacks. Uh, you've got Paulson Adebo, Tyson Campbell, Aaron Robinson, um, Elijah Molden. There's There's a lot of guys on day two. If they don't get a cornerback on day one and they find a way to get a, a third round pick, I would I'd feel comfortable saying I think they'll have a corner by the end of the third round. Hmm. Okay. It's good to know. All right. So two questions here that are kind of similar. First one from Nick, second one from Jaywalk 110. Nick says if Pay and Phillips are both available at 21, who do you realistically see Ballard taking? Let's start with that one first. Uh, so Jalen Phillips has Jalen Phillips probably has, uh, his measurement profile more so, but Quiddy pay, I think Quiddy pay is a safer player and has pretty much just as much upside. Um, both of them are very, they're, they're kind of similar players, but they just are in di- very different packages. Um, pay is a bit more short and squatty, but full of energy. Uh, he's got Ben to him too. He plays to the whistle. Like I said, good run defender, uh, very good pass rusher. Phillips, uh, he's tall and lanky. He, he's not as tall and lanky and awkward looking as Gregory Russo is, uh, but he's got a lot of the same sk- skill sets as Pay. Uh, very good run defender, can bend around the edge really well. Um, he's got those long arms, which is important for a defensive end, um, but he's got the the medical concerns. And I would I would say if both of them were on the board at the same time at 21, which they probably won't be, uh, but I would think Ballard would go with Pay. Okay, and then you know the other one asks, who do you think has more success on our defense between those two? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I have Pay ranked slightly higher, like just by a nose above Jalen Phillips, so I would say Pay. Okay. That's good to know. All right. So the next one from just do it bell 32, he says, which left tackle should we take in the first round? Uh, Darisol would be my preference. Um, after that, looking at, uh, I like Jalen Mayfield, honestly, I, I know some people don't, he's kind of polarizing. Um, he is more athletic on tape than what his testing showed. Uh, that's testing. I, I'm not, I'm not going to put a lot of stock in cause his, his tape looked better than that. Uh, Tevin Jenkins, obviously Samuel Cosme, second round. Uh, Alex Leatherwood is also another another option they could do if they traded back in the first round. Um, there's some kind of sleeper names I've seen: uh, Walker Little at tackle. Uh, let's see, Dylan Radunes is is one that is commonly mentioned. Brady Christensen, uh, but if we're going first round specifically, Darisaw would would be my top dog, realistic for them. Um, and then Mayfield and and Jenkins. Gotcha. All right. So here's the next one from Gareth. He says, what's the likelihood we get Zach Ertz? Okay. So a not draft related question. Uh, That, yeah, that's a good question. Um, So I I think it it seems like a foregone conclusion, at at least from what I've seen, the Eagles will eventually release him if they can't trade him. I, it's probably a a pre June 1st cut thing for them where they don't want to like guarantee his salary. So I would guess he'll be available before. I mean, he's available for trade right now. I don't think the Colts would trade for him, uh, but I, I do think they would be very interested 
to sign him as a free agent. So that would probably be a post draft thing. It seems like the Colts are one of the most likely options. I know the Chargers have been very involved in in searching that out as well. Uh, but it seems like there's mutual interest. Um, I've heard the Colts have looked into Ertz. Ertz might want to come here. He's familiar with Frank Reich and Carson Wentz. So um, the Colts seem like the logical destination if if he becomes a uh, free agent. Gotcha. All right, this one from Zachary Foster. He says, trade down? <laughs> That's all he asks. So I think, yeah. Put, yeah. <laughs> simply put but yeah. i think we're both on that same page we're like yeah trade down if if they're if you feel like you can still get some of those pool of guys like you talked about jake i think that's mm-hmm. a realistic op- option for the colts here this one from brandon smith he says do we trade out of the first round completely or only down that would get them quite a bit honestly um going all the way down from 21 to i don't know 33 34 35 that should get them a lot it would recoup them that third round pick i'm sure um sure it, i guess it just depends on how big their cluster of players is um but yeah i i think the talent in this draft is is deep enough in that end of first second round area to you know why not yeah all right the last one the best name i think on here Lux neck beard. He asks us a question. <laughs> he says, ask about Paris Campbell and his progress. Is he healthy this year and ready to contribute? Uh, well, I, I don't know if he's like a hundred percent, you know, full gear ready to go, but I think he posted a video somewhat recently of him doing on field work. I think he's at least running and, and things like that. So um, usually I know the next steps with that is like cutting and route running and things like that. I haven't seen him post anything about being a hundred percent, but I think he, I think he's on track. Um, remember his, his injury was something that wasn't even, it wasn't like definitely season ending when it happened. It was just something they were going to play by ear and keep checking his status. So, I mean, I can't speak to it, but I would imagine, I would imagine he is expected to be contributing by training camp. Uh, Chris Ballard actually speaks to the media Friday for his, his pre-draft press conference. So that may come up. Hmm. Yeah. You'll be there, right? You'll be, you'll be asking some questions. Yeah. It'll, it, it'll be still via zoom, but I'll be hmm. there. Hmm. That's still exciting though. Yeah. Well, last question for you. This is a question from me. Where will you be watching the draft this year? Uh, this year I'll be in my home office. So I'll, uh, I'll I, I will be fully hunkered in here. I've got, you see my face is real bright right now. I've got two giant screens on either side of my laptop. And then I've got my my big screen TV here on the wall. So I'll have <laughs> everything fully going and home, home base here. Yes. Yeah. That's great, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like we said earlier, it's like Christmas, man. I can't wait. And mm-hmm. it's like not just one day. It's like three days. It's perfect. So I, yeah, that's exactly right. I, that's that's one thing I love about the most is you get that initial high of the first day, but then you got two more days. Yeah. Yep. Like, I mean, by day three, sometimes it's like, oh, a little bit like, can this be over? But at the same time, it's like, man, we only get this once a year. So I got to enjoy it. Even mm-hmm. if I don't even know who the guy's being picked in the sixth or seventh round, I don't care. You know, they could yeah. be a diamond in the rough and that's exciting. So, all right. Well, that'll do it for our draft Q&A a few days before the 2021 NFL draft. Thank you, Jake, so much for coming on, talking about the draft. And uh, it's going to be a good one, man. Absolutely, bro. Thanks so much for having me. Yep. Take care, man. Yep. You too.